Hey, what's up, everyone? Just going to show you where I build all my models at. I used to build them at the uh, computer desk until one day I ruined my uh, laptop, spilt a bunch of uh, liquid flux on the keyboard. End of that, plus I destroyed the table. So this is actually a new table. So the old wife told me that I got to do something else here. So And it's too cold to be in the garage to work. So this is what I came up with. It's a uh, IKEA uh, work decks. It was about $160, $170. Um, and like all IKEA stuff, you got to put it together. It's not very big. But what's nice is that it works out quite well for modeling. As you can see, you can mount all your tools, everything up there. Um, and everything's nice and neat. What the best part is, is that in the middle of a project, you can close it back up. That way it keeps other people out, animals. I have kids. They all want to come by and take a look at what I'm doing. So uh, that's huge, not having to put a project away, be able to leave it in there. This didn't come with it. This I got at Lowe's. It's the uh, toolbox drawer liner. You can buy a roll of it for about 10 bucks. It's like a thin rubber pad. And uh, it just adds a little grip to the surface. Um, what I use to do all my actual model working is this. It's just an X-Acto, they call them the self-healing mats. So you put that down and then work on top of that. And then I use, this as my primary light. It's just a one of the cheap LEDs that I got off of Amazon. It's about 30 bucks. Uh, it swivels. And then I also have another LED strip mounted under here. Um, so I'll start off with this and then uh, I'll go kind of a, a rundown of what tools I have and what their main uses are. So we'll start off uh, kind of basics, uh, kind of stuff you should have. Obviously uh, a good one to have is a uh, Exacto. You can buy any number of uh, brands. This is just the cheapest Exacto handle. They got the uh, removable blade. I believe this is a number 11 blade. Um, you can buy them all sorts of places. The ones that I like, uh, Hobby Lobby actually sells them. They're the Excel brand. And what's cool about them is they actually have a used blade bin. So you can actually shove the used blade in there. And that helps out. Uh, that way you're not throwing away blades in your trash can. Um, and it's got a cool little dispenser, and it's not too much. I think it's like 7 bucks for 15 of the number 11s. So that's definitely a, a must-have. The other one that I like are these uh, Swiss tweezers. And they got a real fine point on them. Um, it's definitely uh, nice to have building models. I mean, you can try and use the other ones, but... Uh, I've always seemed to come back to these. You can get these probably about 10 or 15 bucks. They'll last you forever. Just don't try and clamp stuff with the, the tips because you'll bend them out. You can always bend them back if you need to. So that's another good thing to have. Um, then we'll start off with, uh, you know, drills. If, uh, I think this is a pan of ice. I can't remember what brand it is, but they're just the pin drills. So you can uh, put all the different drill bits in. And I just use the, uh, I think these were bought off of uh, eBay. They're about 10 or 15 bucks. Comes with all the sizes you need. Um, and it has all the numbers here and you can slide to which ones you want. So the smaller ones, uh, you can actually buy in bulk. And I bought those from other sources, I think again off of eBay. And they're about eight to 10 bucks. And you can get a whole nother 
uh, set of them. I think these are the number 80s. And there's like 10 in there. So as you snap them, and you will, these small ones. Uh, so it's a good thing to have a stock of these on hand. And with these, they just have the removable jaws that you can uh, change out. So this one would be set up for your uh, your small stuff. And then in the back, we'll have them down in there. So that's another uh, pretty much kind of must-have tool. Most of the stuff that you're going to be doing is drilling, cutting. Um, then I'd definitely go out and get a set of nice uh, files. Uh, Harbor Freight sells them. Home Depot sells them. They're about 10, 15 bucks. Um, and I've got a whole uh, bunch of them over here. They're, uh, I just use this magnetic base from Harbor Freight to stick them all, but you can see the, uh, the files here. I also have a good, much larger file on hand. It really helps to even out a lot of the, uh, irregular cuts or bigger stuff that you can uh, that are hard to get with the smaller ones. So another thing I think is pretty important, I like to use the uh, single edge razor blades. Um, they're really handy, they're cheap. For me they're easy to control and hold and you can buy them in big bulk packs a hundred of them. I think this was like 10 bucks at Home Depot. Um, and it's got a dispenser. You can take them in and out. Because the worst thing you can do when you're modeling, and pretty much anything, is work with a dull blade. Because you're going to end up hurting yourself or uh, damaging your model. Um, another one that I'd recommend to go out and get, just to start with, is a set of pliers. These were from a local uh, hardware store, Orchard Supply, and they're nothing special. These are the uh, made in China. They work pretty good. The uh, they come in a set. I think these are five. All the different angled, the angled ones. I seem to go to these the most when uh, bending grab irons and uh, other kind of stuff. Just something about that angled. It's much easier to work with. Um, and they come in different styles too. Like this is another one I bought. It's the big flat nose. These work good for re-straightening stuff out. Like when you're, uh, you know, you made a couple mistakes on your uh, your bends and, or even working with the uh, photo etch stuff. These are kind of a a one-off. They've got a circular profile. I don't know if you can see that or not, but uh, it's good for bending round objects, not for actually crimping down stuff. Um, and then your other basics. You know, these set of these screwdrivers. I think we're about fifteen bucks. They work a lot better than trying to interchange tips or, you know, do like the uh, the other ones. And what's nice about these is they've got a rotating tip, allows it to spin around. Um, I wouldn't say these are necessarily must-have, but they're definitely a convenience factor when uh when you're trying to work on stuff and either paint them or uh, just clamp it together. These have worked out really well. Probably the most used tool when it comes to detailing is going to be these. The reason I say that is anytime you're trying to start a new uh, drill hole, you're going to want to use some sort of starter. And that little mark right there is going to allow the drill bit to grab on and then move where you want it to go. So say if you're doing, you know, like a grab iron, now you got your two holes and you could uh, start to drill with your drill set. 
And these are just the cheap ones. I think they're the Harbor Freight. So they last a long time and they're good for cleaning out glue bottles and whatever else. This uh, square is, I actually use this a lot. I like to use it for uh, when I'm doing decals. It's really handy to cut out the decals um, or if you're doing any other building projects. I don't really use the measurements too much. I use it more as a square and a cutting guide. A set of these uh, saws, you can get them. This is an exacto version. It actually comes with two blades, the coarse and a fine. Um, and then, you know, you'd use a miter box. This is good for your bigger items that you're trying to cut. Uh, you know, your wood timbers or... I don't know why this thing doesn't want to focus right now. Um, so this actually gets used a lot in building. And then whatever scale that you're modeling in, it's definitely a good idea to have some sort of scale that will give you, uh, you know, your measurements to be able to convert it. So, you know, I always do, I do HO scale. So this has worked out tons. Um, and it's a good go back and forth. So if you don't have a set of these, I highly recommend going out to a, Harbor Freight, you need to get them like 10 to 15 bucks. Um, but using these when you're scratch building and doing everything else, it's it's huge. I mean, you can use the digital display, but a lot of times it's just, you know, you got a gap here, you measure it, and you need to transfer it to something. And uh, that's where these things are. You know, the, probably a good 10, 15 bucks. You don't need a super expensive one for doing this kind of stuff. Um, and I've had this for at least two, three years, and I use it for out in the garage too, and they it's taken a beating and seems to hold up pretty well. Um, so yeah, definitely do this. And one of the things that I use it a lot for is going into another tool that I find highly valuable is the uh, Northwest Shoreline Chopper. This is the, I think the number two, the number one is the all wooden one. Um, you know, I've used both. This one's just got a smaller table, so it's kind of, it's kind of about the same. They're not, they're both about as accurate. So I just thought this one would be a little more rugged. Um, and if you're not familiar with this, it just uses a regular, uh, razor blade in there, single edge. And, uh, you know, it cuts on the down and then it comes with these and you just mark it and what's nice is you can do repetitive cuts so you can stick your piece in there and get consistent cuts cut after cut and it's nice and square um, so with a good sharp razor blade in there it'll give you a real nice cut but the one thing I really use where these two come together say if you measure something out lock it out stick this up against the the blade here and then you move your stop to go up against this now you have that exact measurement ready to go here and you can cut it and uh that's how i did my last project i don't know if you saw it from that angle but it's basically you stick it in there and uh, lock it down uh, where this really helps out a lot is my last project I did was the uh, Rio Grande passenger car and you have to measure and cut all the clear plastic for the windows and that's where you just get these in there measure it out and then transfer it over here and cut it out and you can knock out all I think it was 20 plus windows in about five minutes and they're all perfectly spaced so again big time saver um, here's another thing that I've done is take all my brass wire, just stick it in a Pringles can. Works out pretty good. You can leave it right here at the uh, bench. Um, 
I bought these bins a while ago, and it's kind of this my miscellaneous, but these I believe are from either Harbor Freight or Home Depot, and they were about 79 cents a piece. Really good for when you're building projects and need to clamp them together. Um, I, yeah, I use these things all the time, uh, building stuff out. Another, I would say, pretty valuable tool to have are these one, two, three blocks. You can buy these anywhere, but when you're building, scratch building, you can put them down. And where I usually build a lot of my stuff is on plates of glass. And that allows you to have a nice flat surface. And you can see with this one, I can get my camera to go down. I actually have this uh, square, plastic square taped in there. So as you go up, you can actually build corners of houses like this and use these. And these things will hold it nice and true. Or if you need to weigh stuff down, they work really well for that. Um, they're pretty cheap. I think you can get these things for like 15, 20 bucks, probably on eBay. Um, and then your glass, it doesn't need to be anything special. Uh, this was just some cheap glass left over from Ikea shelf that I had. And the other nice thing about glass is when you glue on it, you can just take a razor blade and it'll all come up. You just scrape all the glue off. It doesn't stay. So that's another good thing. Oh, and the other thing about glass too, works really well for, uh, well for sanding. So if you need to sand a big project or something, perfectly flat and it'll give you that nice clean edge along there. Um, my main glue that I've been using, I used to use, uh, there's this tester stuff and you can refill it. I was using MEK for a really long time and there's nothing wrong with it. It works really well. Uh, but I recently have gone to the Tamiya Extra Thin. Um, this is about 450 a bottle, and this thing lasts forever. And it just flows and works so much better. Plus, it's got this little brush in here. And that thing just works perfect. So I've really started using that pretty much full time. Um, and then my super glue, just Zappa Gap. You can use anything. The other stuff that works good. Uh, is Gorilla Glue from Home Depot. Stuff's really strong and it's cheap and you can go to Home Depot and get it. Um, some of the other stuff that I would say uh, for my decaling, uh, this is the only stuff I use. Everyone else has like different stuff they use. I use this just for the, you lay the decal down with water and soak it up with some paper towel and then start laying this stuff over it. And as long as you're going over a semi-gloss or a gloss, uh, you shouldn't have any issues. Um, and I just use a dedicated brush for uh, applying it. That way it stays clean and doesn't get full of uh, gunk. And then the other thing, if you do any windows or very small headlights, this is the stuff to have. It's just like, it looks like super or uh, white glue. Um, but as it says, it dries crystal clear and works pretty good. You just dab a little bit on your windows. Um, that helps out. The, the one of the best things I've found when it comes to masking is this Tamiya tape. This stuff can just not be beat. Uh, I've used blue tape. I've used everything. You can see I have a roll of the pinstriping tape, and I, I don't like this stuff. This is the only tape I use from now on. It's not that expensive. It's, it comes in these nice dispensers. And this stuff is just, it's see-through enough where when you're laying it down, you can still see what's underneath it. So you can see by the ruler here. But it just leaves the cleanest edge. And it doesn't peel the paint off fresh painted models, which a lot of other tapes will. Um, 
so I highly recommend this. And you can get it in just all the different assortments. And then when these run out, you can just buy the refills by themselves so you don't have to buy the, the dispenser to help save a little bit of cash. Um, there's this thing, it's kind of an oddball, but uh, they use, I think I got this at the electronics store and you can use it to notch styrene with. So you can actually cut out windows and other stuff with it. And you can see it leaves a good cut. So what you do is you drill a hole and you can just kind of nibble away at your styrene and cut out your window using these things. Can't remember what they're called. And this one's just nothing special. I don't even know if it's got a brand on it, but it's just uh, made in Taiwan. I think I got it if you're local in the West Coast. I think I got it at Fry's. Another good tool. This thing works great if you ever do any of uh, the uh, Canon Company steps. Um, man, these things work great. And this is actually a, uh, well, you can see it, but this is actually a, a uh, thick blade compared to some of the other ones. Um, try to get this camera to focus here. So you can see it's really thin. And then there's, I found these even thinner ones. And these things just, you can see the difference there. But yeah, these thinner ones, they cut so nice. I mean, they're really fragile, but when you do get them cutting right, they, uh, these things cut through anything, especially like I said, like those steps and, um, and so yeah, that pays out big. Um, the other thing I have is just the, I bought this cordless Dremel. It works okay. I definitely have a regular Dremel too, because this thing doesn't have a lot of torque and it likes to bog down. Um, and the other bad thing I don't like about this, the button and the shaft release are right here. So I'm constantly hitting the shaft release, which stalls it out and kills it, which I imagine can't be good for the, uh, the mechanism in there. But other than that, it's got the nice little light on the end and it's a variable speed. And it comes with a little charging base so you can put it in the, uh, work uh, area here um so yeah that's kind of a real quick down and dirty oh the other cool thing one last thing i bought this from micromark and it's a hand hand or grab iron bending gauge and if i can get this thing to actually focus so it has all these markings and uh you just loosen the clamp up and you can slide the wire in and it goes into whatever one you want. You tighten it down and then you just bend the, uh, the wire over this and these ridges, you bend it up against that. It actually leaves a, a fairly 90 degree corner. Um, so I got these from Micromark. They were about $30, kind of pricey, but, um, if you're into building a lot of models that have one-off grab irons and then you can use this in combination with your uh, your gauge here to figure out what size you need and go from there so good tool to have uh, I picked this up probably about a year ago uh, order it from Micromark and I've used it probably about 10 or 15 times now and it's pretty much paid for itself um, especially when you're building older kits that don't have pre-bent uh, grab irons um, so that's pretty much it uh, if there's anything else you'd like to see or I'm gonna try and start doing some more of these type videos and maybe actually start building some models on the camera here so anyways just go ahead and leave in the comments thanks